Hi everyone, Shane from the Reptile Doctor here today. And this is a turtle obviously, and she's hiding down in underneath here. And I think as most of you are aware by now, this time of year we get lots of them coming in by, by car. And that's exactly what's happened to her, and she's got a shell fracture around the back here. This is a common type of fracture that they get. You can see she's fractured through here, and that actually extends over the back of her shell. And so this back piece is actually quite loose. Uh, that's going to be relatively easy to fix. It's a common type of fracture and we've got a pretty good technique of fixing those. But that's actually not her main problem. Uh, we're going to show you the x-ray of her shortly and you'll see what the, what the issue is. Alright, so here's the x-ray of that turtle. And you can see for starters that she's full of eggs. She's actually got 16 eggs in there and you can see that they're standing out quite well on the x-ray. So that tells us that they're well calcified and they're ready to come out, ready to be laid. But the problem that she's got is with the type of shell fracture that she's got, and you can see the fracture just sitting down in here, and below my finger there, that's the shell. But the other issue we've got is this section here, which is her pelvis. She's actually got a fractured pelvis, which again is something that we commonly see with the type of shell fracture that she's got. Now the dilemma that we have is that that pelvic fracture there has meant that the pelvis has closed down a bit, and she can't push those eggs through that pelvis. And so if she was out in the wild, Basically, she'd develop a condition called dystochia, which is the proper name for not being able to lay her eggs. And so we're going to take her to surgery today, and we're going to take those eggs out and fix that shell fracture. And uh, over time, that pelvis will heal up. And we're going to probably look at rehoming her into um, captivity, because we really don't want her to get gravid again, because uh, there's a risk that she might not be able to pass those eggs out in the wild. And then, obviously, all her hard work will be for nothing, and she's going to end up in trouble out in the wild. So. So we're going to take it to surgery, and uh, we're going to video that and see how it goes. Okay, so we've got this turtle anesthetized now, and we've got her positioned here, laying on her side, because we're actually going to make the incision just through there in front of her uh, rear hind leg. It's called a prefemoral fossa, and she's hooked up to the anesthetic machine. Ventilator there, breathing for her, that click there is when she breathes, and that's her heartbeat going there. So we're going to go ahead now, prep her up for surgery, and we're hoping the eggs are going to fit through that gap. So we might have to do a little manipulation to get them out. So we may have to roll her over and take out eggs on the other side too. So she's got 16 eggs, so she's got quite a number in there. So we'll do our best to get them all out through the one incision. Alright, so we've got her prepped up, ready to go. So we're going to make an incision down in this area, open up the belly cavity and get the eggs out. Sounds all pretty simple, let's see how we go. Quite a confined little space that we're working in here. Yeah, just cutting through the muscle under the skin. And I can see, you probably can't see it on the video, but down through the hole I can actually see one of the eggs sitting there. So just gonna open up this hole so it's big enough to get the eggs through. Uh, I think you can see through down there, there's an egg down through the cavity. So we're going to delicately now just try and grasp that and lift it up and out. Just gently applying some traction on that. Here comes the first of the eggs. There's one. So this is still in the uterus. The ovi duct. And I'm just going to gently, gently retract that. I don't want to pull too hard. This stuff is very, very delicate tissue. And we don't really want to be tearing a uterus. Got two of the eggs out now, and I'm actually just going to make a little incision. I've torn this uterus just here a little bit, so I'm just going to make this hole a bit bigger. 
and we'll just gently push that egg out through there. And there's our first egg. We'll put that aside. We're going to incubate these and hopefully get some little long neck turtles. Let's try and gently milk this other egg towards that hole that I just made. And take it out through the same hole. And it comes. And there's egg number two. So far so good. We've been able to get those eggs out through that hole and through the shell so I was a little bit worried they were going to be a bit big so there's egg number four. So I'm just sort of trying to push them up through the ovi duct and, and to the outside and taking them out through the same same incision. Just got to be a little bit careful we don't actually break the egg against the shell. Turtle Make another little incision of that ovi duct just to get this egg out. Generally don't re suture these holes, they just seal up on their own. And certainly in the in the captive animals that I've dealt with, they've gone on and reproduced without a problem. So that's four out. Twelve to go. And just manipulating the egg just to get it into the right alignment so that it slides out between the shell edges. So, and I'm moving it back because it seems it's just that touch wider just towards the back of the leg here. And I just push that shell a bit wider and out she comes. So we're just putting these in a container of vermiculite the one to one mixture and we'll incubate those here and hopefully in 65 to 70 odd days we'll have little baby turtles from this one so remember the reason we're doing this is because she has a fractured pelvis and I'm worried that she's not going to be able to lay the eggs naturally and she would in the wild most certainly be in a fair bit of strife we're just going to keep going here until we get as many out as we can on this one side. Hopefully we'll get them all out on the one side, but um, if need be, we can roll her over and do it. Same procedure from the other side of the body. Now, there is another technique where you can actually cut through the middle of the shell, the plastron underneath. But obviously cutting through shell is a lot more labour intensive, plus they take a lot longer to, to heal. They take a lot longer to be able to get back in the water. And so, if we can, this is the preferred technique for getting the eggs out or getting inside a turtle. So we've certainly had turtles that have swallowed fish hooks and other internal foreign bodies that we've taken out this way. So that means we just have to worry about the soft tissue healing rather than the shell. So they're sort of six weeks healing versus many, many months. I think what we'll do is we'll stitch up this side, roll her over and go in from the other side and take the remaining eggs out. So this is all the ovi duct here now, empty of eggs on this side. So we'll tuck all that back in. Stitch her up. Alright, so to stitch her up, we're just going to close up the muscle layer down in here. Close the skin layer. 
Alright, so I've stitched up the muscle layer, so you can see all that's all nice and closed now, so we're going to close that skin. With these skin wounds here, obviously the skin's going to take a little while to seal, so she can't really go back into the water just yet. And there's, I think there's a bit of debate about how long we actually leave these guys out of the water. Um, I tend to only leave them for a fairly short time, a matter of a couple of days, and then the, the skin seals, and then I get the owners or the wildlife carers to just let them have a bit of a swim for a... 15, 20 minutes once a day for a couple of weeks and then after that I pretty much let them go back into the water as per normal. Take the stitches out at six weeks. And um, they're all healed. I had somebody ask me about my green gloves. Looks like I'm wearing gardening gloves many of the videos and that's simply because I actually have an allergy to the powder that's in many of the surgical gloves. I get a burning sensation on my hands so these are special neoprene gloves that are made for people like us who have an allergy so um, it makes, means I can more comfortably do surgery and I don't end up with a nasty dermatitis on my hands. So roll her over, set her up on the other side and Pretty much repeat the process. Okay, so we've rolled her over and we're now going to go in through the right hand side. This is the side that's got the more severe fracture in the shell. You can see that just here, so we're going to fix that after we've done this surgery. It's a bit of wire and we'll, we'll video that too. So, so I'm going to make this incision in the skin just like we did on the other side. Expose the muscle. Go down, get these eggs out. I think is our last one, if I count right. 16. So that's worked out pretty well. Eight from one side, eight from the other. So we'll tuck all this back in. It looks pretty good in there, so you know, bleeding, everything. It's looking pretty healthy. So we'll close up this side, and then we're going to fix that shell fracture.